Hi, it is me, Elliot Fears here again, and today I'm going to be testing a Medusa T951 two-stroke portable generator. Now the generator's maximum load is 950 watts, although its continuous load rating is 750 watts. Now, before I tell you more information about the generator, I shall just take you briefly around it and show the various elements starting with on the top obviously underneath the cap is where you fill the fuel and the various safety and um, information stickers um, on the front obviously that's the plug where you plug um, your appliances or your load into it now we are in the UK so this is a UK style sort of plug um, the little red button is a trip reset um, here you have the choke um, this is the ignition switch or the, or like the on off switch for the generator so the plug the trip reset the ignition switch and the choke now coming around the side you obviously have the crank or starting handle like your pole to start the generator coming around the back you have the spark plug what is here this is exhaust and the exhaust outlet is just there. There you have a 12 volt DC outlet that will take up to 8 amps so you can charge maybe like your car battery or whatever you want to run off it. That's 12 volts. And this peculiar lead that many people don't use is a grounding or earth lead as we call it in the UK. That's hammered into the ground. Doesn't go into the ground that far but it's about maybe a foot long because I always like to ground portable generators if they have a facility now I think that's enough information about the generator um, the fuel ratio is 50 to 1 but now I shall get on with testing the generator okay in a minute I shall start the generator but before I do so, I just want to show you what I'll be testing and what my load will be. I shall be using a mince grinder that is rated 550 watts. I shall also be checking the voltage. Now, because this is a UK generator, the voltage should be around 230 to roughly. So, just to give you an idea of the region of the voltage. Anyway... I shall now get back in the process of starting the generator. I don't need to use a choke because the generator is already warm, although the generator usually, or more than anything, starts fine with the choke if it's cold. Now the first thing I'm going to do is turn the fuel on. Now I'm going to turn the ignition or the engine switch on. Um, the mince grinder is on the off position, so there will be no load on the generator when I first turn it on. The choke is off because it's already warm. And here goes. Now this is a two-stroke, so it may be slightly noisy. The generator is now started. I shall now get to testing the load. Okay, as you can see, the voltage is around 230 volts. Now, because this is not an inverted generator, the voltage may not always be smooth. I shall now turn the mince grinder on to show you how the voltage can sometimes vary when you turn appliances on. I shall now turn it on once again to show you again. I 
shall now turn off the generator to show you the voltage dropping. I shall then start the generator back up again to show you the DC voltage to prove that it worked. Although I'm sure you trust me, the generator fully works in all aspects. I shall now go and turn the generator off right now. Okay, I shall as now you can test see, the DC voltage the of the generator is clearly reading. My multimeter no is on the 20 volts DC voltage setting. DC stands for direct current, and AC stands for alternating current. For people that don't know, also I forgot to mention a minute ago, most UK appliances can operate anywhere between 220 and 250 volts. Anyway. Let's start the generator. As you can see the voltage is now around 13 volts. That's perfectly fine and it is only 1 volt over 12 volts so that's perfectly fine to charge a car battery in about four to five hours, maybe even three hours if it's a very small battery. Anyway, um, yeah, I shall now shut the generator down, the ignition of the engine switch is off, the choke is off, and finally I shall turn the fuel tap or fuel valve off for safety and it also stops the carburetors being flooded. Um, also, I forgot to mention in the beginning of the video that in here is the air filter. Um, yeah, so this is really the end of my video. But if you have any comments or want to post a video response, please do. And until next time, I'll see you later.